Hi, I'm Courtney Harder with Case IH. Today we're going to be talking about the process of changing over a crop kit. And when you need to change over a crop kit is um, if you're doing any sort of seed type change. So refer to your recommended settings chart in either your operator's manual or your productivity guide to tell you what crop kits are available and when you need to make that change to another crop kit. So once we've decided that we need to make that, uh, to make that change, let's say we're going from corn to soybeans, um, the first thing we need to do is we need to remove our mini hopper from the row unit. So we've got three connection points of the mini hopper to the row unit. First of all, our bulk fill hose, we're going to press in and turn that and until that is loose. Secondly, our vacuum hose is a sliding lock collar. We're gonna push that back and wiggle that off of there. And third is our V-drive connector. So we will disconnect that and we'll wanna make sure that we removed the cord from this locking tab on the meter here. Now that our other connections to our mini hopper are free, we're going to undo this spring latch and now our mini hopper is free from our row unit. So now that we've removed the mini hopper from the row unit, we are going to remove the meter from the mini hopper assembly. So first of all, we want to take a finger and hook into one of these clips here on the meter. And uh, then secondly, we are going to take our thumb and press up on this locking tab right here and then pull out the meter of the mini hopper assembly. So. Now our meter is free from our mini hopper and we'll take apart the meter and switch over the crop kit. So to make the switch over of crop kits, we're gonna go today from corn, which is inside this meter, to soybeans. So the first thing we need to do is undo our two locking tabs on the top of the meter and now the two sides of our meter are free. Now we are gonna be switching over a crop kit, which is going to include a, a disc, a singulator, and an ejector wheel. So we're gonna put, we're gonna take out the, each of these for the corn crop kit and put them in for the soybean crop kit. So first of all, we're going to remove the corn disc. And while we have that disc removed, it's always good to just do a visual inspection of this, uh, of this rubber vacuum seal here. Just make sure there's no obvious chips, anything in it that would be, um, that would be affecting your vacuum pressure. Um, so once we've got that free, we're going to take out our ejector wheel. So now we'll take our soybean ejector wheel, our new ejector wheel, and um, we're going to make sure we've got a spring that lines up with this little nub on the ejector, on the ejector wheel here. So we're gonna line that up first, like so. Then we're gonna snap that in place. So we wanna make sure that that ejector wheel is, um, is, is being pressurized by that spring. We wanna make sure that it's perfectly, that that nub is perfectly seated in the spring of that ejector wheel. And we wanna make sure that we don't have any, have much room to move with our um, our locking tabs there. We wanna make sure those are completely locked in. So the next thing that we are going to install is our seed disc. Before we put that seed disc in, um, one thing we wanna check is the number of shims that is, are underneath um, that seed disc. Um, if you have questions about um, properly shimming that seed disc or how many shims that needs, I refer to your operator's manual. So we are going to place the seed disc and make sure it's fully seated. And um, the next thing we want to do is we wanna make sure it aligns with that ejector wheel. So we're gonna press that seed disc in and start turning it until we can see that those nubs of the ejector wheel fill the cells of that disc as we turn. We wanna make sure that those are perfectly aligned because that confirms that we've got the right ejector wheel and that our ejector wheel is not worn so much that it's, uh, that it's not going to be effective. So now that that is in place, we'll put our clip back in. That part of the meter is done. So our next meter cover has our singulator in it. So we'll snap out that singulator. 
So that is free. And press our next one into that, uh, into that same position. We want to make sure that our singulator floats completely free of this tab at the top here. We don't want this tab to be hooked into the singulator whatsoever. We want completely free range of motion of that singulator, not prohibited by, by this locking tab. So once we've got this, um, we, are, we are ready to put our crop kit or put our meter back onto the planter. One other comment to make is that different crop kits come with different components. For example, if you have a specialty brush, depending on the seed disc that you've um, that you that is included in that crop kit, there may be a special brush that's included in that crop kit. If there is that if that special brush is there, make sure that you replace that with the crop kit as well. Once all the components of our old crop kit that we took out of the planter are free, we'd recommend storing them in a toolbox that allows you to neatly compart compartmentalize um, each of the components. You can see we've got the disc stacked here. We've got a little tote for the ejector wheels um, there, and we've got a special storage compartment for singulators as well. Um, that makes it really easy to, uh, to store those components. They don't have any specific storage um, requirements to prevent warping of the disc, any of that. You can just put them in, uh, in the toolbox like is shown here and, um, and get them out for the next season. Once our crop kit is completely installed, we are going to put together our, our meter. The first thing we're going to do is make sure the, the bottom tabs on each side of the meter cover lock into each other. So like that. And then we will do our two locking clips up top. And then once we put our meter back into our mini hopper, we want to make sure that this, um, this lip on the meter aligns with this tab on the mini hopper. So we're first going to make sure that that's fully seated. And then we're just going to press that back into our clip up top. So we want to make sure that when we pick up our mini hopper that the bottom of our meter is not swinging at all. If it is solid one piece, um, that means that it's fully locked in place. Now we're going to put our mini hopper back on our row unit. So we secure it in the same way that we originally took it off. So we're going to make sure that's seated. Um, we want to make sure that our, we're completely locked in, that there's a nub on the bottom side of this that's fully, fully seated. Um, next we're going to connect our, our same three connections that we took off. And when we connect our vacuum, um, our vacuum hose, we want to make sure that the locking collar is fully, um, is fully seated in there. So just give that vacuum hose a tug once that collar is, is fully seated to make sure that it is locked on there and it's not going to fall off. And lastly, we want to make sure that when we latch the mini hopper on, that our mini hopper is fully seated into that position before we latch it. So for more information, reference your operator's manual or contact your local Case IH dealer.